Hello everyone. Welcome to our Friday afternoon live. I apologize, we're running a little bit late today. Um, I had a late meeting. So we're going to jump straight in because we're doing a few fun things today. Um, one of them I haven't shown you before in a live. I've done a few videos using our wallpapers, um, but I've never shown you the painful wallpaper. So that's what we're doing today. So, um, whew, sorry, I've got notifications coming through left, right and centre. Um, I'm just going to wait two seconds to see if anybody jumps on. Say hello as you do. If you're watching this back later, let me know. Um, my name is Elise. I'm the owner and the artist behind the Painted Brush and Co. And uh, we're located at 37 High Street, Eagle Hawk. You can also find us online at thepainterbrush.com.au. And everything we're using today is available on our website. I apologise, there's some kids outside screaming. And no doubt, knowing Facebook, it will be picking up that noise. So I apologise if that's what you can hear. So today, let me do a little, without spilling my drink, let us have a little look at what we're doing. So as promised today, we're using our paintable wallpaper and we are going to be transforming this really cute little bookcase for comparison. Here's a roll of paper. I think this is 53 centimetres tall. So just for comparison, really, really cute size. I got this at the auction a couple of weeks ago. Um, it's got this really nice detail up here and it's actually got a lip on top of it as well, about a centimetre. Um, really nice piece. All I have done so far is primed it. I have rolled the primer on and just so that I can get started today, I've cut our first piece of wallpaper ready to go just because it's not a long process but it just speeds it up just that little bit so bookcase ready to go i've only primed where we will blah 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 sorry uh where we will be painting so i don't bother priming the back our wallpaper is going on it and it's going to cover it the wallpaper we are using today is let me spin you back around is this beautiful print let me bring it nice and close it's a little bit geometric it's got beautiful detail so this is a textured wallpaper and it's paintable which means that you pop it down and then you can paint over the top you can of course leave it as it is it is white though so if you're like me and you like a little bit of color you can paint straight over the top the design that we're using is called the embossed zigzag and it is $9.95 a meter. So um, we're going to cut, hang on, let me move it out of the road where it won't stood on. We're going to cut our next piece for our top shelf. So I've done our bottom shelf, now we're going to do the top shelf. Um, I have already cut off the length that we need. So to keep it really, really simple when you're measuring your piece to fit your wallpaper, I'm going to turn you a little bit just so you can see what we're doing. When you're working out your length and your position for your wallpaper, the wallpaper does match up. So edge to edge, it does match up. However, if you're lazy like me, um, and we all know that you are, <laughs> you're going to go the easiest route. So this piece here is the full width. If I was to go up and down like this, I would need to match it up. That's too much effort for me and I'm not here for that much effort. So instead, we flip it on its side. It does mean our pattern goes slightly different. Most wallpapers you can get away with changing it. So I popped it on its side and I have cut my first piece, which fits beautifully in the back. Now, to work out the length, I'm sure this is very logical to everyone, but for anybody wondering, I take a tape measure, rulers, and well and good when you've got a small space, but when it's a larger space, tape measures are easier. You want to measure the inside to inside, and that's 70 centimetres, okay? And then if you've got an odd shaped piece, etc., just measure each 
pieces aren't always accurate. If it's not exactly the same, that's fine. You just cut it slightly different. All right, 30 centimeters all the way around. Now, I'm gonna move you again. I know this is super thrilling, but it's all worth it. All right, so from the edge of your paper, the edge of the paper is a straight line. Um, unless you have already cut it for whatever reason, it will be a nice straight line. So we're doing 30 centimeters exactly. And again, I just like to do that little dot. Just a little dot, same as you'd measure anything really. And I find this to be the easiest way. Wallpaper is quite thick. So sort of having it that little bit bigger, forcing it in there and then trying to cut it down with like a Stanley knife, it just doesn't work as well and you'll end up with a bit of a mess. So I do find it's worth taking a moment to sort of measure and as yeah, it takes time, but it's worth it. If I'm using like a really thin paper, like a tissue paper, for example, or even like a really thin wrapping paper, then I'll sort of just get it rough, get it as close as possible, but still rough. And then, um, Pop it in, let it dry, get it all squared off nicely in the corners and I'll take a Stanley knife and cut it. Um, but wallpaper, I do find it's much, much easier. So when I've got pieces, just to save me some time, I like to just put a star or something on it so I know which side. These are pretty similar. And if I'm doing a lot of cuts as well, it just saves you time. Try and save your off cuts and measuring it like this as well also means you've got a lot less wastage. So trying to get those measurements just right. And you can always trim it if you need. If you're a bit worried, go a little bit bigger and then slowly trim it down. But most of the time, if you get your measurements right the first time, you'll be fine. Just take your time if you're a bit nervous. Save those excess bits. That for a small drawer, plenty big enough. Um, the front of the drawer, the inside, I could even have another bookcase, so in the back of it, save your off cuts. If you don't have a use for it, offer it to your friends, you never know. Um, I even had someone come in the other day to buy some wallpaper to wrap a present because they wanted that specific design. So you can literally use it for whatever you want, but always keep your off cuts. All right, so. Our second one, let's bring our bookcase around just a little bit. And there's our, hang on, what about I move you around? The, I'm sorry, the sun's behind it, but you get the idea. Oh, it's not too bad today. We stopped working down here because the sun was always impacting on the camera. All right, so we've got our wallpaper. You just want to take a moment if you do have a paper like this to sort of look where that cut has ended up either end I do like the cleaner end um, the other end's got just a little bit of the extra bit so we're going to pop that at the top so that's the bit that we've cut and we're going to pop it at the top so you just want to measure it once you've measured and cut do a little dry run with it first make sure it fits in there I've not made this easy for myself but that's all right and make sure it goes in there. Now, this is the time, if it's not fitting perfectly, take a moment to work out where you need to make adjust adjustments to your paper and you can cut a bit off um, and do whatever you need to do. If you are finding for some reason you've got a big gap where you shouldn't have a gap, cut it down, cut another piece off your wallpaper, off your roll, and do an extra piece in there to fill that spot. But most of the time, if you do take your time and get those measurements just right, It'll fit perfectly. So now we've got our top and bottom done. Let's glue them in. All right, give me two seconds. We are going to make, I'm all about making my life easier. So I'm gonna bring this forward and then I'm very carefully without knocking it, you can see that. Because we're gonna light now. All right, oops. 
bring you over and I'm just going to bring the camera up a little bit taller. I apologize for moving it. Two seconds. Let's get you nice and high so you can see exactly what we're doing. How's that? All right, so there's our wallpaper in there. For gluing it, you can use whatever you like, whatever you prefer. You can use a wallpaper paste. You can use PVA glue. I have used wood glue, which is pretty much PVA or a form of PVA glue. You can use Mod Podge. It is completely up to you. As long as it's sticky and it does its job, it's fine. Now the glue that I'm using today is this Montmartre PVA craft glue. Um, I've got a couple in stock. They're $4.95, so they're a nice cheap option. They're a little bit thick, but apart from that, I really like it. Um, and I've had no issues with it holding my paper down either. So, I like to just get a few blobs of glue down. Oh, my bottle is almost empty. But I sort of just, there we go. A few good blobs. More is more in this case. I do like a decent amount of glue. Now this particular glue is a little bit thick, so I like to just spray it with a little bit of water. Just helps the glue move around. It's completely up to you whether or not you do that. But this glue is water-based and it just, you can see it's quite thick. It just moves it around that little bit more. All right, and now you're just gonna get your glue. Now, I do like to cover the whole area, that way you don't have any air bubbles. And I do like to get that glue. Make sure you're really getting it in those corners and on those edges. Take a moment to make sure you're getting it everywhere. Because those corners and those edges, that's what will lift. So you want to be making sure that you get it all in there, just like so. And then once you've got those edges done, you do want to work quickly, your glue will dry, will start to dry quite quickly and you want to be working with it when it's nice and wet. That way you've got the ease of use with your paper. And just keep moving your glue around till you've got a fairly nice, even coat. You don't have to stretch, stress too much. Oh, I'm very, I'm, I'm quite short and I have very short arms <laughs> and now I'm up on my tippy toes trying to reach. But that's all right, we'll get there. So, and this application is exactly the same for all of our wallpapers as well. And I, even any other paper that you want to use, this is my preference. Most of the time. I'm sort of trying to go through all our wallpapers at the moment and use them as well. And I've been dying to use this one. So I'm so glad that I got this bookcase. All right, so once you're in, I like to just go back over those edges again at the end. Make sure they've all got plenty of glue in them because that's where it's going to lift. Now, if it does lift after the fact, you can always touch it up a little bit. Right, take a bit of paper, make sure you know which way it's going. We're going that way around. All right. I like to sort of fold it in half a little bit and lower it down and sort of get one end in. If you get one end in just nicely, then you'll find your other end will follow and it takes a minute to get it there so don't just take your time if you force it and rush then it just won't go in right and when your glue's extra slippery with that bit of extra water on it as well it really does make a difference and it just helps your paper slide in there nicely and just keep going all the way down Now, this is a printable wallpaper, which means it's got a bit of texture to it. If you push down too hard, you can flatten some of that texture 
So while you want to be making sure that it's getting in there, you also don't want to be pressing so hard, you're all removing some of that texture. So use the end of your ruler along those edges in particular. Answer. All right, so we just want to iron out any wrinkles. You may still get a few, but wait for it to dry. You can always um, use just a little tiny cut and press any out if you need to. But I find like the wallpaper is pretty good and they all tend to just sort of go away on their own. You just want to take a moment and sort of press it out and press out any that you are getting in there. So just like that. And we're looking a bit pretty. And it's well worth adding just that little bit of detail. It is a fairly plain piece. So I do like adding a little bit of detail. Now we're just making sure as well that we press down all those edges. Make sure your edges are pressed down and stuck. If you do find any lifting, you can either just leave them and come back once it's dry. You never know, they may still stick. Otherwise, you can um, put some glue down now while it's already wet. But I find most of the time, they're fine. All right, so there's our first side, You're looking beautiful. We've got a couple of very small crinkles in it. You will notice in a pattern like this as well, but that looks really pretty. Let's do side number two. So again, we're going to take, oh shit. <laughs> Look at this, right off the edge. All right, side number two, again with our glue. A good splatter down. Sorry, I know how frustrating is having a gap like that in the middle of a live, but I will put the live all joined together up on our YouTube. The last couple of weeks lives are also up on our YouTube as well. It's just the Painted Brush and Co. is the channel name. Make sure you subscribe as well. It's free to subscribe and it just boosts the views and the people that see it as well. It tells, like everything, tells YouTube that you are interested and that people are interested in the content. So it helps my little business. So, just popping our glue down again, making sure you get plenty in those corners and along those edges, like so. Don't stress too much if you get it. In other places, the glue does dry clear and you can just wipe it off as well if you get an excessive amount somewhere where you didn't mean to. All right, so, I can't reach because I'm too short. It's probably the hardest thing about doing what we do. Because if you're short, it's just, it's quite the workout in the end. And I've got short arms too, which makes it even harder. If there's something you would like to see us do in our lives, let me know. I'm always looking for ideas. Um, if there's something particular you want to see, let me know. Uh, so we're going to do the wallpaper today. We are going to do a little bit of painting today, uh, possibly. Yeah, I think we can. Um, and then, I don't know what we're going to do next week. What do I want to do next week? Ooh, maybe next week we can use Pure Eco's Eco Stripper. I finally got a bed, set of bedside tables here and I want to strip the finish off them because they are a veneer but they've got like a really pretty pattern in them. So maybe next week we'll do the paint stripper, the Eco Stripper, which I think will be good fun. I'm very excited to use it. I still haven't used it. I think it's been out for three or four months. Probably a bit longer, actually. <laughs> I'm probably the only stalker that hasn't used it. I just, I, it's just not something that I, ooh, something that I do very often. All right, 
So, you guys can't see what I'm doing, so that's not going to help anybody, is it? I mean, try and... There we go. Alright, so again, on your paper, you just want to check which edge you want. Uh, this paper is pretty straightforward, but the edge that I've cut has sort of gone into that next row. You can't see it if I'm standing all the way back there. So, it's just a little bit gone into the next row. You can see how there's rows. So, I'm going to put this edge at the shelf level because that's the edge that you're really going to see. Up in under here, you're less likely to see it. Um, we still want to make sure it's neat and tidy, of course, but we want to make sure that the part that you can see is the part that's looking real pretty. All right, so squeeze down in there again. Get one edge in first and then get the rest. And having your glue that little bit wetter helps get that edge right down in there too. And then just carefully, and if you press it as you go and as you unroll it, you're less likely to get bubbles. If I whacked it down all in one go, that's how you build your air bubbles. So take your time. get those edges in really nice and when it's still that little bit wet you've got to put a bit of pressure but you can sort of pull it just a little bit and create and if you do get an air bubble like I just do just lift it back up a little bit back up on my tippy toes push it up in there and you'll get a nice clean line. I'm just going to take the beveled edge of my ruler again. I'm going to push it right down along that shelf. Make sure I get all that bottom bit in there. Lovely. The shelf's not attached to the back so when I'm pushing it's actually pushing a little bit any excess underneath the edge as well. And this is just makes it that little bit easier to get all of that up where we want it as well. It's also making my life a little bit easier. We're all about making it easier. I'm extremely lazy. <laughs> but you wouldn't know. Anybody who sees how much I does would have no idea that I'm extremely lazy. But anything to make my life as simple as possible, I am all for. So just using that ruler, bit of pressure, making sure we get no bubbles. And I'm just gonna bring it back down over these couple here where there is bubbles. Now don't press too hard because you can also rip your paper as well. So you just wanna be gentle with it. Remember paper when it's wet, it rips easily. So don't go too heavy handed. All right, shall we lift it back up? have a look. Alright, so there's our two sides. Let me... Oh, it's heavy. It's a very well built bookcase, I will tell you that much. It is heavy. Now, yeah, we're going to be painting the back as well. Let's do a little turny turn. How pretty do we look already? So, it's not looking like a lot, but... Our paper's in there, it's nice and flat. It's just added that little bit of detail. Not too much, but just enough. So now, let's do a little bit of painting. Um, we're going to, there's no point in you coming over there. Um, we're going to, let's do the outside today. Um, and the back, uh, do I wanna do the top right now? No, we're gonna leave the top. So my idea with this piece is, We've got this trim and it's got like a little lip, then another lip and then there's a lip on the top as well. Can you see how there's a lip? So my thinking is we're going to do one colour all down the bottom, including over the paper. We're going to do another colour at the top. I'm loving two tones at the moment. Um, it's a look I've wanted to do for ages, but I just haven't had the right piece. So, and I told a friend that I was doing this colour. She's like, uh, no, <laughs> but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, I'm going to use Purico Silk Finish 
in the color rosewood because I absolutely love it. It is a really beautiful earthy pink um, and I think it's gorgeous. So we're going to use silk finish. I like silk finish because it's a blah, 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 sorry, because of its durability. So it's got a built-in top coat, seven day cure time. I have got Pure Eco Silk Finish on the big book, oh, where's my finger going there? This big bookcase over here in the corner that you can sort of just see. I've got Silk Finish on that. Now that's used here in the shop. It is very heavy use. Um, there's not a mark on it. So on a shelf, 100%, I trust it. That's also why we've done the basin blocker first. We do recommend using the basin space, blah, I'm talking too fast, my brain can't keep up. Base and blocker first before we come in with our um, silk finish. Right, and I'm gonna show you the painting because I'm gonna show you silk finish being rolled, okay? So I've showed uh, chalk finish being rolled, but I haven't shown silk finish being rolled. It's absolutely beautiful being rolled. You get a really, really beautiful finish. Um, and it's just, it looks like it's been sprayed. It's a real, thank you truck. I know you guys, that's all you heard then. Um, it, it really does. It looks like it's been rolled. It's a perfect finish. So I want to show silk finish really, really easy. Now, as always, give it a good shake. Give it a good stir. Brand new jar. So I'm using a 200 ml jar. These ones are $24. The, let me move it back a bit. The 600 ml jars are $46. I'm using a 200 ml because at the moment I don't have any other uses for rosewood, but who knows? So the plan is rosewood at the bottom. I'm thinking of white at the top, but I'm also kind of thinking maybe I should do a white with a tiny hint of the rosewood in it. Just so it's like that little touch of pink, but not like super, super obvious either. So we'll, we'll decide later on. We're gonna do this bottom bit first. All right, so when I'm rolling, and when, come up, come up without making a mess. Brand new chair. Wipe your lids off, don't waste the paint. Um, when I'm rolling and I've got detail like this, or even on the inside, I'm gonna cut in first. Same as when you're doing a wall. So, to do that today, I'm using our, where's that camera, 38mm paintbrush. Let me move some of my things out of the road for a second. Oops. Ah, that's kind of too the blue. Alright. Using a 38mm paintbrush to cut in along there and then around on our shelves on the inside. I'm using a I'm not using that one because I didn't clean it very well. Hang on two seconds. Oh. All right. I should have found the roller before I grabbed it. We're using a two fussy blokes roller. These are these fit any small rolling frame. And these are the five mil nap. These are what I use all the time. Um, I've shown you them before. I absolutely love them. So for reference, this is a brand new one. Nice and fluffy, looking really nice. This one was doing really well until I rolled. I can't even remember what I did with it the other day, but you can sort of, I think you guys can really see. Oops, where are we? See how crusty it looks? It's really rough. It would still probably roll okay, but ideally I wanna give that a bit of a soak and give it a really good clean before I use it again. But I just wash them out in hot soapy water and they wash out really, really well. So it just needs a really good wash and it's still fine to use. Um, I think I used it on, I used it on my green sideboard that I painted with Rainforest the other week. Uh, for a rolling frame, you can either use, oops, the one, what, where are we? The two fussy blokes rollers. These are really nice. I love how thick the handles are. They keep my hand really nice. They come with two rollers 
and the frame, and they are $24.99. Or, if you've already got one, and I'm a big fan of using what you've already got, use a standard, just a small paint frame, uh, rolling frame rather, rolling arm, whatever they're called. Just use, it fit, they fit on any standard frame. And thankfully, rollers are pretty standard these days, thank goodness. So it just slides on the end, and away you go. So any standard. Um, I do like to use a paint tray. I don't currently have any in stock right now. This was the last one that I pinched the other day. But let's get started. So I always have a brush on hand when I empty from the jar. If you leave all of that paint on the edge of the jar, your lid's not going to go back on very well. So always make sure you clean them. Bit of paint on our brush, as always. Helps if you can see what I'm doing. Rolling it, uh, loading your brush up, dipping it in, wiping it off, gets that paint into those centre bristles. And then I'm just going to come along and, this isn't a great setup, let me just move everything that way a little bit so that I can reach what I'm doing. We're just going to come in and cut in. This is all this is called, cutting in. Not too much paint, it's just enough so that you get that nice clean line at the top, otherwise you'll end up with a bit of a mess. And then, let's try not to lose anything, loading your roller, just sort of keep rolling it around until you get it nice and loaded. And you want a nice even coat all the way around your roller. That's gonna give you the nicest finish. You don't want so much paint on that roller that it's flicking everywhere when you're painting. You'll have a little, you'll have a little bit, but you don't want it going everywhere. And then straight up and down. I'm not stressed if I get it up along there. It's really not the end of the world because I will be painting that. And this paint self levels. So any texture that you're building up with your roller is all going to sort of do its thing. And oh, I love this color, absolutely love it. So this is a rose wood in the silk finish. You can also get it in chalk finish. Up and down. A bit awkward when there's a table in the room. This roller arm is very, very long. How beautiful does that look? It's such a nice sort of almost salmon-like colour. It's really not showing well on the camera at all. That's all right. All right, so how about paper feel? Yeah, our paper feels really good. So let's paint. It's such a beautiful piece. Oh, so again, the cutting in the inside. Now, in this case, we're painting the back and the shelves, etc. So we're literally just going to get my roller to sit still for a second without falling off. Ideally, I'm just going to bring it closer to me. We're just going to cut in again. all the way down, making sure we're getting all that top inside piece as well. All the way along the back. Now you could by all means just brush the whole piece, um, but rolling does make it that little bit quicker plus rolling sponge, so why not? And again, up the other side. Now, I'm not gonna put, do anything more to my actual wallpaper today. I'm not gonna paint my wallpaper today, just because the underside is wet still, and I don't wanna add more moisture to it. 
but I am going to get the first coat done on all the shelves while we're live because I want to show you all. So we're just getting up on those inside pieces and our brush out of the road. Come back in with our roller again loading it up same as what we did just a moment ago and then you sort of just work out the most comfortable way to get all of that rolled going back to front sort of works quite well for the shelves don't forget the outside either and if you work quite methodically as well, you'll get a nice finish. I really, really like this pink. I think it's beautiful. Well done, Purico. And such a beautiful colour. I'm very excited to use it. So again, front to back is sort of just the easiest option. You just want to get that paint on there. This is still only the first coat of your colour, so it doesn't have to be perfect, you just want to get that coat on. Be, be a perfectionist with the following coats, okay? Up and down, make sure we do these outside frames as well. On that side, I'll go up this side too while we're here. Alright, so a bit more paint. So the amount that we poured out has done one side and most of a shelf. Oh no, it did do oh it did all the shelf. I forgot that I did the shelf. everywhere. All right, and again, down on the bottom, we're going to cut it in. This time as well, we're going to cut in across the top of the shelf or the underside as well. I do like to do, on a piece like this, I like to do the underside. On my big bookcase, I did the underside of all except for like the very bottom two because there's no way you're going to be able to see them. But I do like to get most of those on there. So just cutting in, it just makes you rolling that little bit easier. And up along the top. I'll bring the camera down in two seconds so you can see this one being rolled as well. Paint everywhere. Bring you down. Sorry, it's a dizzying ride. <laughs> Where are we? Oh, I wish Facebook would let me record it in landscape. It's very frustrating recording like this. So, ledge roller again, and away we go. Front and back is generally just the easiest option. And I like to sort of turn it and run the edge of my roller along those two corners as well. And again, we're gonna do front to back at the very top here as well. I'm sort of just gonna roll it first and then I'll take a moment to stop and have a look. Oh. Actually, I could just turn, tilt it back. The other day when I did this, I had it sitting down on a trolley on the floor, so it was quite low. But this works a little bit better. Just find the motion that works easiest for what you're doing. That looks pretty good under there. Does anyone have any questions? It's pretty straightforward, so I'm not expecting any, but you never know, and I'm always happy to answer them if you've got any. I will be here tomorrow, 10 to 1, um, and then we've got a workshop tomorrow afternoon, so if you're keen to attend a workshop, let me know ASAP. Um, 
because we've still got a few spots left. So if you would like to come tomorrow, you're more than welcome. They're just held here at the studio, 37 High Street, Eagle Hawk. And um, what was I going to say? It's two till five as well. So just in the afternoon. But the studio itself is open until one o'clock tomorrow, 10 to one. And I will be, I'm gonna leave this sitting here, so I have no choice but to finish it tomorrow morning while I'm here. I'm just going to use my brush to paint across this bottom section. It's just a bit easier. So just one edge to the other, rather than trying to roll that. There's really no point in rolling such a small section like that. But I will just run the roller over the edge of that shaft as well to make sure I'm getting a nice clean finish. And you can sort of see, well, you can sort of see um, the texture of that wallpaper too. So when I paint that, I will film it tomorrow when I paint it. Um, you'll be able to see the texture really come to life. Oops, that's the table, not the bookcase. I do like to roll bookcases as well because normally the shelves are a lot closer together. Um, it's just, it's time consuming. Doing it by a brush when you've got like a really small amount of room, rolling just makes more sense and makes it a lot easier. Again, we've got this top lip. We're just going to run a little bit of paint across there. I'm going to leave this top section until well, I'm 100% certain on the colour. I'm thinking a white with a very small amount of the rosewood in it. So it's just got a tiny little tinge of pink to it. So it's not super stark. will be really lovely. But I will wait until I've got all of the rosewood done so I can make a decision. Because I always prefer to sort of see, see the colour in its true beauty and glory first. It just makes it that little bit easier. Now across the back, let me show you what we're working with. Oh, it's not the easiest piece to move around. But it's probably a little bit easier to see what I'm doing than no, last week's. Now across the back, so our little lip ends here, but the back, I'm just painting the back because it could sit anywhere. Ideally a bookcase you do want it against the wall, but I'm also planning on most likely putting it in the window as well. This piece in this colour, in this area, I'm not expecting to sell very quickly at all. So. I'm just planning on it possibly hanging out in the shops for a little bit longer than what some pieces do. So I'm just going to paint the back. The back was fine. I rarely paint the backs of pieces, but I'm just going to paint the back to make it look a little bit nicer, particularly if it does end up in the window, which is my plan probably tomorrow, depending on how how busy we are and how much I get done. All right, can you see what I'm doing? Not really. Here you go. Okay. So, up and down, so I've just cut it in. You can see how much easier it makes it. My roller can't get into that corner. And I find by cutting in first as well, I'm not, there's not enough of paint on that. I'm not um, then going back over that nice rolling with the brush and sort of ruining that finish either. Now you'll use the most amount of paint on your first coat, uh, just because you're getting that coverage in there. You'll use a similar amount with the rest, but you will notice as you go, you use less paint each time. So we've opened a 200 mil jar, and we've used just over 50 mil, maybe about 75 mil so far. So little paint really does go a long way. You can see we've got pretty good coverage. This is a lighter colour. 
Um, and pinks and reds, they're notorious for needing an extra coat. So I'm guessing we're gonna be looking at about three coats all up with this piece. But that's absolutely fine. That's just the nature of the color as well. And it would be the same if I used a white, any of the other pinks, um, or any other white colors as well. So it's just part of using a color like this. I did a rainbow on my son's wall with a bright red, yellow, and an orange. And they all took three coats compared to the blue and the purple, which I took two. It's just the nature of the color. So, you can really just paint, roll in whatever direction you like. But as you do each coat, you want to be a little bit more sort of even as well. All right, so I've got a little bit less back in my tray. I'm just gonna scrape that out with my brush and pop it back in my jar. But apart from that, that's it today. I can see this cat, oh, that sort of shows the color a little bit more true. It doesn't show up very well when it's on it. No, see how the color just dulls out heaps. It's a really, really beautiful pink anyway. It is not the gray that Facebook's showing it or the brown that Facebook's showing it as. Um, so that's pure eco silk finish, Ooh. <laughs> Don't throw away the lid's not on. Pure Eco Silk Finish in the colour of Rosewood. And the paper that we use today is called Geometric Zigzag. They're both on the website, as is the two fussy bloke rollers, the glue, and the 30ml paintbrush that we've just used. Thank you all so much for joining me. I will pop part one and part two of today's video, I apologise for the disruption, together and I'll get it up on our YouTube in the next week or so so you can watch the whole process. Um, if you've got any ideas for a video that you'd like to see, any products you'd like to see, any finishes you'd like to see, please let me know. I'm always happy to oblige and help out wherever I can and show you something that you guys really want to see. Um, apart from that, have a wonderful weekend. I'll be here 10 to one tomorrow at 37 High Street. Bendigo, and um, that's it from me. Thank you all so much. Bye.